Olivia, did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this month's Salute to Service. And with me today, I have newly appointed Medina County Veterans Service Commissioner representing the Vietnam Veterans of America, Jack Forster. How you doing, Jack? Very good, thank Welcome you. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. So let, let's start off with a little bit of your background. Where are you originally from? Well, I grew up, uh, started to grow up in Cleveland and then moved to Parma. Okay. Uh, then I've traveled, my wife and I have lived in about 15 different homes all over the country and uh, out of the country. Right and uh, graduated from Baldwin Wallace College uh, uh, in early in my career and did 35 years in information technology, mm -hmm. had a ball and did a lot of travel. So now I'm, I'm glad to be sort of situated in, in, in one place. Semi-retired kind se of. Semi-retired. And really enjoying working with the vet, different veteran organizations. Right. So you're living out in Medina now, I know that, but uh, so let's talk a little bit about your service. When did you go into the service? In Marine Corps, right? Yes, yeah. Marine Corps. I went in in 1967, right out of high school. Wow. Um, and uh, in, at the end of 67, I was over in Vietnam, uh, w wounded in May of 68 uh, uh, during the Tet Offensive. Right. And... Uh, Came back, uh, spent a couple months in Guam in the hospital there, and then uh, Bethesda Naval Hospital. Uh, so, and that's when I got out of the service, and the Marine Corps really helped motivate me. Uh, I did a lot of digging of foxholes and spending time in the mud, so I figured when I got out of the service, that wasn't a career path I wanted, you know, getting dirty. You want to dig any more foxholes? Uh, there you go. <laughs> wanted to do something a little different, right. and... Uh, but the, the Marine Corps really helped uh, motivate me and uh, to do things and, and to continue to grow. It kind of gives you a different sense of, of you know, God, country, and, and, you know, what you're all about. I mean, I think, I think generally veterans are a little more um, dedicated to the nation. I mean, we see a lot of them now being, you know, elected into political positions. And that trend was going down, and now it's starting to reverse a little bit, uh, you know, when our World War II veterans were passing away. Um, Congress was much smaller than it is, you know, as far as veterans go. Right. Um, and it's gotten smaller. Now it's starting to grow back up where more veterans. I was just reading the other day where three uh, disabled veterans were just elected to Congress this past year. So that's good. Yes, I've um, seen that. It's good to see Good to see them in whatever party they're from. I think they got the, the kind of the sense of what this country is, is all about. Um, so let's talk a little about just recently, uh, last week, appointed to uh, the Medina County Veterans Service Commission. Um, what made you want to be on the commission? Well, I, I, I feel that, you know, it's important to uh, help serve our veterans and, and to help foster that camaraderie and, uh, you know, being commander of the Medina VFW for three years and uh, a member of a number of different veteran organizations, it's, it's an opportunity for me, a real privilege to be able to go on and service uh, the, the veterans throughout the county, e you know, even more mm -hmm. and the, as a veteran services commissioner. So, so you represent the Vietnam Veterans of America on the commission, and it's interesting because the Vietnam Veterans uh, of America, it seems like, I mean, we know when they picked that name, it seemed like there was going to be an end date for that. I mean, obviously, eventually, there's not going to be any more Vietnam veterans. I mean, you remember the Grand Army of the Republic, they kind of went uh, by the wayside, and the Korean War veterans now is another one. Um, so how do you feel about the veterans organizations as a whole? 
Um, and there's a lot of, this is a, you know, a topic we could talk about for a long time, but there's a lot of people that say there's a trend of people going away from the veterans organizations. There's now new uh, organizations out there that aren't quite as ingrained as you know, what they call the big six, the VFW, the American Legion, the VVA, the DAV, and AMVETS. Um, now you have Team Red, White, and Blue. Um, you have IAVA, Iraq, Afghanistan, Veterans of America. What's the differences or, or what do you see as the nuances between these newer organizations and older organizations? Well, I, I really haven't had much of an opportunity to, to see the newer organizations. Right. I, I think the challenge is uh, for all the veteran organizations is to reach out, especially to the younger veterans, uh, to help bring them into the fold. But as, as myself, uh, you know, working uh, when I was younger, you know, it, it was hard to participate. Right. And, uh, and we still have the same challenges, but as those veterans from Desert Storm and so on uh, continue to get older, I think uh, uh, we have more and more opportunity to bring them in and have them participate with veteran, veteran groups. But, you know, I think we, we need to continue to educate and reach out to those veterans. Do you, do you think that, I mean, there was, you know, you go back a few years, there was a point where the Vietnam veterans weren't joining the organizations. And there was, you know, reasons back in the 70s why that was. A lot of them were turned away. But now you see, you know, they're running the organizations, whether it's the VFW, the Legion. I mean, it's all Vietnam vets. And so that kind of plays into your, your comment about, well, younger folks are busy. Right. And, you know, today's military, more of them are married, more of them have kids than you know, when you were in the service or even when I was in the service. I mean, so do you think it's just society that it's going to take some time for this younger generation to participate in these groups? I, I think so. I think, I think that's it's been the trend in the past, and I think it's going to be true going forward. Um, the key is, is I think we just, you know, need to be there for them right. and, and continue to, you know, reach out in various ways to communicate and educate. Do you think they, the organizations do a good job of promoting what they do in the community, in the state, and at the national level? No, I, I don't. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to really improve communication and to improve outreach. I mean, we do the military ball uh, for Medina County, um, and there's more opportunity to get people to come to that. It's a great opportunity to meet other veterans and to have uh, ability to really uh, dance and, and participate in things there at the ball. But, um, but that even still, it, it's a challenge to get that communication right. out and to, and to get them uh, to, to come to the ball. Yeah, we've, we've, you know, I know in the past the organizations have offered, you know, free tickets and things like that. I think I think, you know, the community, when you talk about what the community with the veterans organization, it's going to be different everywhere. Every community is a little bit different. But I think where these organizations are missing is what they do nationally. Um, you know, the, the lobbying for Congress to benefit. I mean, because there would be no GI Bill if it wasn't for them. There would be no 9-11 GI Bill. The benefits packages, um, the Mission Act that just got passed. I mean, those are all lobbied by these organizations. Good, bad, or indifferent, those that legislation would not be there without them. And I think that's where some of the organizations are missing the, the, the beat is telling these younger folks, look at these benefits are here because of us. Right. And you need to be part of us because Lord knows Congress, they act on votes. So <laughs> the more members you got, the more they're going to listen. Don't you think? I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. So what do you think they could do? Um, what do you think we could do in a, as a community as a whole, not just the VVA, but all the veterans organizations in Medina County to promote ourselves and help, you know, maybe membership get better or help the younger folks know that we're there and what we do in the community? Well, I think that's, a, that's the big challenge. I think, uh, you know, reaching out and having things for the young kids. A lot of these families have, mm -hmm. have young kids. Um, th those are ways to, to get them involved the little bit that they can, um, like Christmas parties for the kids or anything. Any, I mean, families are centered around the kids. Right. 
and that's one way to reach reach the veterans families and those that veterans that need help you know is you know uh, it's amazing how many don't know what's available to them oh, the benefits wise yeah they don't i mean i i can tell you that you know even the marketing we do and i still talk to veterans whether it's today today's veterans or whether it's vietnam veterans that go i would never known i've had this available to me and you, you know the one thing we try to tell people we try to stay engaged with the community um, because those benefits constantly change. Right. What I tell you or what the federal government tells you you may not be eligible for today could be much different in one or two or five or ten years down the road because legislation changes and everything else. Um, so we try to keep people continually engaged and tell them, you know, you, know, you want to stay in contact with us, you know, whether it's social media, newsletter, whatever, but we want to keep reaching out to people. So the Vietnam veterans, we know that they... Uh, you know, nationally, they're big on the Vietnam um, presumptive conditions, Agent Orange type stuff, and uh, we know they've did research on children. What do you feel that the Vietnam veterans of America can do to reach out to those Vietnam vets, whether it's locally or nationally? Well, that's a tough question. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, there is communication out on Agent Orange, right. and if you you would gone to the registry, you get ongoing communication on, on the status of Agent Orange. Um, the, but I, I think there's a lot of people that have, have not registered, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's one opportunity to, to reach out and, and get veterans to register. Get veterans to register with the, with the VA hospital. Right. Um, surprisingly, a number of them haven't. Um, and they have the Million Man program at the VA hospital, and that's another opportunity to, for veterans to participate and help right. in studies and ongoing research. Yeah, I think the registry is a good first step. Um, they do, you know, you can go online and do it, or you can go down and take the um, Agent Orange physical, which is a pretty short test. They do some blood work and things like that. Yeah, um, but it. It gets you in the know to where they can send you emails, updates of different things that's going on, um, if any of the presumptive conditions change or anything like that. Um, I, I know, you know, the Agent Orange, like the Camp Lejeune water, you know, we talk about toxic chemicals. Right. It's, it's changing every day as far as what's in, what's out, um, medical science, research, all that stuff. You know, I mean, it's always changing. So, like I said, what's available today may change tomorrow. There may be a presumptive condition that's not on the list today and next month or next year or 10 years from now, it could be on the list. So, I know, uh, you know, aside from all the veterans groups and things that you belong to here, you also do a lot of volunteering and different things trying to promote uh, veterans. So, what do you do out in the community um, as far as functions go and things like that? Well, it's, uh, I, I work real closely with the VA uh, Women Veterans Health Program. Mm -hmm. uh, we, try to, we supply lunches for women veterans that are going through PTSD. Um, and a lot of the women, uh, they don't have a lot of money, they can't afford it. And so it's one little way we can. But Diana County also uh, goes to the VA uh, hospital once a month mm -hmm. uh, every year. All throughout the year to help uh, do bingo with the with the, the veterans that are in the hospital. Uh, we bring clothing items, we bring treats, uh, cookies, candy, and those things to uh, and so reaching out and helping them. Um, those those are are great opportunities to meet with the veterans and to to help make their days a little better. So a lot of people, you know, I mean, when you know, it, it, when you say, hey, we take treats down there, we go down there and do bingo, you know, you know, somebody might just go, oh, well, that's cool. But how do the veterans that are there, I mean, because most of these veterans are in the domicile. I mean, they're not, you know, some of them are hospitalized, some of them are there for mental health counseling, some of them are there because of injuries. How do they receive you when you guys go down there? Oh, they really, really enjoy uh, having us there. They, they're thankful. Um, we get recognized. Uh, Lee Shepard heads up the program mm -hmm. every uh, uh, for us in the coordination there at the VA, and uh, they really enjoy it. Uh, sometimes we have the Boy Scouts come, and and 
the veterans there really enjoy mingling and talking with the, with the Boy Scouts uh, or the vets that are there and, and, and some of the wives that come down and help. And I'm sure the Boy Scouts get a little education and talking to those uh, folks down there too. That's a great way yeah. for them to get out into the community. It's a really special day for them down there when you show up and do that. And I know a lot of different groups do that, but I think that's what people got to realize is just a little bit of volunteering or a little bit of outreach, you know, like taking some cookies and spending a couple hours and playing bingo changes people's lives. I mean, it re because they're, they're kind of stuck in there for the better part of however long they're there. Right. And it does, it does, you know, it's good. Some of them have no family. Right. Um, to come and see them. Some of them have been brought here from, you know, distances where their family can't come and spend long periods of time um, unless they're in the Fisher house or something like that. But I think it really, and that's, you know, that's what I want our viewers to know is that the impact that just a little bit of time and resources makes a huge impact out there for these folks. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I've done for six years now, going, going on six years, is the IX Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to get various veteran organizations or service organizations like Rolling Thunder that participate right. Uh, and help with veterans a, a lot um, at the IX Center. The IX Center gives us a free booth and, f and free passes to come in, free parking. Um, this year we're working with, uh, for March, in this coming March, uh, with the uh, uh, latest technology and prosthetics, uh, the, the women's health program, uh, we've got uh, Hep C, which Hep C is a huge issue, especially in the Cleveland area. Right. But I'm sure there's a there's opportunities. Well, the baby, the baby boomers too, I think, is what. Yeah. It, yeah. And so, so those things, you know, what it does is it allows us another way. And the Veteran Service Office is there every year, yeah. um, and multiple uh, counties, and that's another way of reaching out to the veterans and. I, I know I, I see the IX Center has been a great event. I think, what do they get, about 50,000, 60,000 people through there a yeah. year? Yes. Um, and I know we always share a table with, you know, we usually have Cuyahoga County, Lake County's been there, Geauga County, Summit County, um, Medina County, of course, Lorraine County's been there. And we always share the booth with the other county veteran service officers. And, and it's, you know, it's really, it's interesting because, you know, we talk to the vets, we get to talk to them about their benefits and things. But the one thing that I really like about it is talking to the civilians because you get to talk to civilians about the military experience about veterans about what's going on with veterans and they're really interested yes um, because they want to you know they're almost like the ones that want to make sure that our veterans are being taken care of so it really is a good educational time to to reach out and talk to fifty thousand people that walk by that table um, and ask questions about what's going on with our veterans or what I'm eligible for, or what my dad's eligible for, or my son's in the military, because it seems like everybody knows somebody that's in the military and they start asking exactly. the question. Exactly, exactly. Um, so it is, it is a great opportunity. Um, and if you like cars, the cars are phenomenal too. I mean, you know, they got, now this year they got airplanes there, boats. Right. Um, anything, the Piston Power Show um, it, during March, and it is a phenomenal thing if you like engines and Used to be the Autorama, and now it's all anything with a piston in it. I think. Right. Exactly. Um, and what's the uh, what's the World War II airplane they got in there this year? Well, uh, well it, uh, you know, I, I I can't think right off the top of my head what the model is of the plane, but but they brought it in from Texas and they have cleaned it up. They brought a couple of people from Texas actually to assemble it. Right. And so it's it it's it's an amazing thing, and it's right in the area where right. we're at. Um, and uh, I wish I knew the uh, the model number of the or the model of that plane, but uh, a lot of the World War II vets, which are now the numbers are down mm -hmm. significantly, but um, you know they they love those things or the kids of, uh, of World War II vets, you know, seeing what, uh, what yeah, was I around. I can't think of what uh, what kind of plane. It's it's the cargo version of one of the bombers during right. World War II. Exactly. Um, and it is pretty phenomenal just to look at. But it's a great show. If you're a veteran, you get discounts. Yeah. Um, so if you're a vet, come on out. You get discounts. Um, come stop by our booth. We'll be there and talk to us. I mean, it is, it is a good time. Um, and the IAC Center does a great job on sponsoring the veterans organizations, like you said, um, they let us come in there and bring all our stuff and 
and talk to vets and everything else. So they're really trying to promote um, what's going on with the veterans in the community of, of, of Northeastern Ohio, more or less. Well, and you know, with the uh, prosthetics department at the VA hospital, we've, we've taken photos of all the different stages of mm -hmm. building different prosthetics. And it's amazing, the technology, and it's a research center down there. They do a lot of research in prosthetics. Um, and one of the prosthetics that was up to the hip for uh, uh, one, one uh, veteran, he, he was going back to Afghanistan and they were building this, this prosthetics for him. So uh, it's amazing what they can do. Yeah, I, I, you know, compared to years ago, it, 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 it is truly amazing. I had met a guy who was a lieutenant in the 10th Mountain Division and um, had lost a leg. And I want to say, I don't know what triathlon, I think it was the Incubus Games, he had won. Um, a few years back, and his son was there. His son said, he says, yeah, my dad has 11 legs because he had a leg for just about every kind of event he did. He had a swimming leg, he had a running leg, he had a jogging leg, and, uh, you know, just to see, he said that's given his life back because that's what he liked to do was run. He was a runner, you know. Right, when he lost right. his leg, he couldn't run anymore. Um, it, it is amazing that the things that, uh, and the VA is on top of the technology. I mean, they are, when we talk they about really prosthetics, are. yeah. They, and they work with other hospitals. But um, all bad things said about the VA, there's a lot of good about the VA, um, especially the healthcare center. Um, so I, I take that all with a grain of salt. Big uh, advocate for what they do. Um, so let's talk a little bit, you know, I mean, you're here because you just got appointed to the commission, and we're glad to have you on there. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Medina County Veterans Service Commission is made up of five board members. Um, we get a new one appointed every year for a five-year term, and Jack is the most recent. Um, what's your view or what's your vision or what do you hope to accomplish? Um, and I know you've only been on the board, you know, a couple weeks now. Um, so, you know, I'm not asking you the, the hard question of anything that you don't know about. What do you hope to accomplish while you're on that board um, for the Vietnam Veterans of America and for the veterans of Medina County? Well, one, I, I, I have a lot of education I need to do. Uh, for myself in particular, and uh, in being able to link with ed other veteran service officers throughout not only the county, but uh, you know, through the state, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of opportunity there to learn. And, and reaching out to the veterans and try to help get out into the community, whether it's participating with uh, different organizations, community organizations, or whatever, to uh, to talk about what the Veteran Service Office does and, and how, how we can help veterans. Um, that outreach, I think, is important uh, because, you know, there's a lot of veterans that need help and just right. don't know that it's there for them. There's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there, too, and I always say, you know, propaganda or misinformation is worse than no information at all sometimes because... Um, I've met people that have been told, you know, by someone that they're not eligible. So they just, they're not eligible, you know. And, and, and chances are the person that told them may, may or may not have been a professional. It may have been somebody sitting next to them at the, you know, the VFW or the Legion Hall. <coughs> and that person goes through a period of time of life of going, I'm not eligible. Right. And they never go back to check to see if things change. And then they find out five years down the road have been eligible for this benefit for a long time. Um, <clears throat> so be careful about where you get your information. I guess this is the one thing I like to tell my viewers. Um, and, and even if you get the information, go back and see if things change, you know. So, right. Um, well, we're glad to have you on the board, uh, and I'm sure that you will get educated. It, it, it is an experience, I can tell you that. I've gone through um, quite a few board members now, being here 10 years, and uh, it's always a learning curve for, for people coming on the board. So, But I think... Uh, I think the board is, uh, does well here in Medina County for our veterans of, of the county. Um, I always ask everybody this, and I know you've been on the show again, but your military experience, if you had the chance to do it all over again, would you do it again? Absolutely. There you go. Jack, thanks for coming on the show, and we'll see you at the board meeting, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, viewers, and we'll see you next month on Salute to Service.
Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.